Hi there, let's go to my favorite Goodwill. This giant faux flower arrangement caught my eye, but I was a little bit more interested at these plates. These were individually priced, and in the past, I think Goodwill would have bundled these together, and I probably would have bought them if they were bundled together, like all the small plates and the larger plate. They were all individually priced. I know they were all only $1.99, but I thought it was a lot. I don't know. I, I'm thrifty. <laughs> I just thought it was too much. And they were unbranded. I think they might have been a hobbyist piece. I could be wrong. This is a Marjolaine Bastin. I'm not sure if I am pronouncing her name correctly. It was a really cute frame, and I thought about it for a little bit, but later I noticed that there was a chip to the tail feathers, so I did put that back. They had a nice little brown display here of the salt and pepper shakers and some dripware pottery. The rooster may crow, but the hen delivers the goods. <laughs> this was a vintage little basket, but I decided to move on and see what else I could find. On another end cap, they have these creamer and sugar with the cardinals on them. I felt they were more contemporary, so I left them there. And then all those highlighters, be still my heart. <laughs> the teacher in me loves highlighters. And then they had this really pretty kind of a Capa de Monte style flower. I think this is more uh, mass produced, not really Capa de Monte. That you can see the individual thumbprints on the flowers and it's usually marked Capa de Monte, but it was that style. This was nice and I probably would have picked this up if this was a different color, if it was a green or a blue, but I thought the brown was kind of common and not very exciting. Here was a little golfer girl. Uh, so I left the bird and the golfer on the shelf. The brown section is my favorite area, I think, to look at because you can get so many different things, figurines and home decor and dishes. So I do like to look at these aisles first. And then down there, see that? That's a giant ashtray and it was marked 1975. So it is a hobbyist piece. Somebody else came along after me and did take that with them. I thought that was neat. I hadn't seen a map ashtray before. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking Oh, looking at this little pottery bowl. It was marked on the bottom. It was a nice little sweet bowl, but I do have some art pottery in my store already, so I decided to leave that for somebody else. And then I turned around to the white section, and I looked at this mug, and I thought this mug was really, really cool with the horse. Looks like a watercolor painting of the horse. Uh, so I decided to take that. And then this I thought was funny. This is obviously vintage. Whoa, hey, <laughs> this was, <laughs> let's get a little close. Uh, obviously vintage, a plug-in whistling hot pot, a little teapot with birds on it. I thought that was cute. I'm just showing you the style and the, the um, images on it. Then right next to the uh, Declaration of Independence, <laughs> I found a bag of Wade Whimsies. I had already listed some of these, so not all of them. I've already sold some of them. So there are a few left, but they were mostly the um, ocean themed ones. And there's another look at the Declaration of Independence. I'm thinking, is this the original? Should I get it? No, I decided to leave, <laughs> I decided to leave it on the shelf. There were all of these. Nope, we're going to look at this. I'm not showing it to you. Lift the camera. There we go. Uh, all these little cute ladybug cups or glasses. I thought they were adorable. They were quickly snatched up too. I I know. I know. I should have grabbed some of them, but I don't know. I just, I like to sell groups of four because they're easy to pack. But after that, I'd have to get a bigger box and then the shipping is more. So I talked myself out of it. This little piggy bank was cute in the shape of a baseball. Here is a look at the red section. They had some Japan lusterware. That was a pretty bowl with the bird on it. Here's some more ladybug glasses. Yeah, those did not last long. Those are really cute. Perfect for summer. I put this with the rest so they would see that there was even more of them. And then this giant tin on the bottom was really big. You can see how it's hanging over the, the uh, shelf there. Very mid-century modern look to it. Only $2.99. It was marked on the back. But I left that on this shelf as well. 
And then I was seeing if these were Tupperware brand because I have picked up Tupperware brand of the plastic cups before and sold them. I couldn't, I think I couldn't see a marking on it that distinctly said Tupperware. So I did leave those. Sometimes you have to do a little rearranging on the shelves. This was a big candle. A giant glassy baby. No. <laughs> Sometimes you have to rearrange the shelves so you can get at the things. I thought this was very sweet. This is an art pottery creamer with the irises on both sides. I thought someone might want to use that. It's marked. There's the signature. Or they could use it as a vase. Oh, it's a little blurry here. There we go. Checking out the plates. See if there's anything exciting that will grab my attention. And then on the top there, I believe this is made in Italy. Yep. That had chipping. If it didn't have the chipping, I would have gotten that. I thought that was pretty. It was a nice shape to it. There, I'm giving you another look at the chipping. And then I spied this right here. <laughs> this Masonic Lodge plate. This is heavy. I think it went on a building, so I decided to get that. And you can see really quickly there's another mug in the basket that I forgot to film. Here was a lucite owl-shaped napkin or letter holder. I thought it was adorable. Has a little bit of chipping to the base where the owl is sitting, but other than that, really great condition. But we're going to check out some more dishes here. And they had a whole bunch of this set here. Trying to get in focus for you. It was Lennox. I did look it up, but I just don't have a lot of room for plates and bowls. If they had a creamer and sugar or um, just a butter dish, something specific that's kind of unusual to find, I probably would have picked these up. I wasn't quite sure what these were, and then I realized they were yearly ornaments from CVS. And I did look them up. You never know. There's a collector for everything, but they weren't really high sellers. There was another one. And then here is what the mouse looked like. Cute, but I decided to leave that on the shelf. There seemed that someone had turned in their collection of ornaments because there was another one inside the glass. And then these were made in Japan. They were nice. There was a little chipping to the hair. That could be forgivable. I think if we were closer to fall or Christmas, I would have picked them up, even though I do sell the holiday items year round. I just wasn't feeling it for those, so they stay on the shelf as well. Oh, it's part of this snowman thing. Let's see, bakery. Oh, Windy Meadows Pottery. I have a smaller one of this at home. That's cute, the little bakery. These are all made by hand. Let's see. Oh, and here's a uh, David Winter Cottage. It's in good shape, too. I'm going to take this one. It's cute. Good grips. Silicone egg poacher. <laughs> Albums. Lotions and potions. Oh, this is cute. That's kind of cute. He makes that. Made in China. That's cute. A little bit. Her foot is broken. Flowers. Oh, here's. Take this. Put that down here. Holiday cookies. So we have this David winner. Scrooge's house. And the big house. And this looks like it maybe is made in Puerto Rico. Not sure. 
Over in the art section, they had a country Christmas cross stitch that was already in the frame that was nicely done. And then they had a crocheted piece that was in the frame. And I wanted to know what was this piece that someone paid to put it in a frame, but the, the artwork was wedged in there so close together, I wasn't able to get it out. And then here is another cross stitch piece. I thought that was really pretty, but I decided to let them go. That was nicely, it has a nice frame with that mat and everything. You know, that cost a pretty penny. And plus all the time that goes into counter cross stitch. I have done counter cross stitch in the past and it is uh, very time consuming, but very, very rewarding though. I wanted to show you the toy section and then I thought, wait, here's Garfield. Goodwill, a nonprofit organization, well, is a great place to work. You just stick Garfield in your trunk. Just go to your goodwill.org and click on jobs at goodwill. It's crushed kitty. Hmm. That's kind of sad. I thought it was Garfield. I like Monster High dolls. I know about Monster High dolls. I don't know anything about Barbie dolls. There's all that. That looks like a fun time. I do keep a lookout for the Monster High dolls. I don't really know much about Barbie dolls. I know some people are very knowledgeable with them, but I know Monster dolls sell, so I do look for Monster High dolls. American Girl dolls is another doll that I look for. Any of their accessories, clothing. Here's all the toys. And now I'm really interested in picking up vintage playing cards. And um, I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> Here is the book section. They moved the books to the back of the store. Looks very nice. And then I thought I would check out the silver section before we left. I would have picked up this little cute yoga frog, but it had a mark in the front and it was sold at Ross before. So there really wasn't a lot to look at in the silver section. But like I've said before, sometimes things sneak in there. Oh, there's some Fisker scissors. Those are nice scissors. <laughs> I have a pair of those. And this is what the store looks like. And then here's the other side of the silver and black section. We're going to wrap up this trip to the favorite Goodwill, and we are going to go to the big Goodwill. I made a quick trip to the Big Goodwill and the first thing I found was this deviled egg plate with everything. Everything was still there, the, the salt and pepper shakers and the center piece of the hen that you can stick toothpicks in. So I definitely took that with me. Here's a little cow creamer I thought was sweet. And then on the bottom shelf, look what I found. Winner! <laughs> I haven't had uh, found praying hands in a while. So I was definitely winner that day. This was a short trip. I didn't find too much, and there were a lot of people at the store, and I decided to not stay very long. I spied that orange glass thing from across the shelf, went around to check it out, and it was a made-in-China piece. This was a cute little counter cross-stitch piece. Um, I don't know if I filmed the orange piece up close, but from afar, I thought it was Italian glass, but it was not. Here, I'm not quite sure. I think I'm just looking at everything because you never know. And their shelves are pretty crowded. And then I found some vintage push pin fruit. There's eight pieces of fruit. They do show somewhere, but they are in overall good shape, I think, for their age. And then the last thing I found were a couple counter cross stitch kits. And then I also found a lion kit. And I believe it's open, but I think everything is still there, this cruel picture. So coming up next is everything that I found on the two trips to the Goodwill.
I hope you enjoyed the little Professor Booker. He was the cat that uh, he stays in the library during the day, but goes home with one of the librarians at night. And we stayed there for an afternoon one time when I was uploading a video to YouTube. Very friendly cat. Here is the mug that I missed filming. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and hitting the thumbs up and leaving a comment. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see ya.